what we're seeing is that just like uh, in the late 90s when we kind of adjusted to what we didn't like about managed care, um, we're starting to have some repercussions on healthcare consumerism as well. What are some of the issues that you're seeing uh, that, that we need to rethink somewhat and, and, and how would you start to address some of those issues? Uh, well, uh, I, right away I think of healthcare literacy. I think if we have a very educated population that I'm involved with personally, and if you went around and asked them to define their deductible, their co-payments, their out-of-pockets, I, I don't think many of them would get 100. And, and then once they start understanding that there's cost involved from them, that evokes a fear. So if you've got any wage sensitivity, income sensitivity, and you package that with, you're gonna have skin in this game, that evokes some amount of fear. And so I think patients are increasingly almost afraid to go to the doctor for fear of what it will ultimately cost them. Mm -hmm. yep. yeah. And I think the medical system too. So providers are, are, geared, are geared more towards the consumerism. There is more of a shared decision making that's being talked about and being uh, you know, pushed as, as doctors are talking to uh, their patients. But then again, looking at things culturally appropriate, linguistically appropriate. Uh, we were big into that in the early 2000s. It's kind of gotten away from that a bit to more standardization. And so the patient, their wishes and beliefs have to come back into the equation a lot more. And, and to your point, Andy, I think that uh, we have not learned the lessons that we perhaps necessarily needed to learn from when 401k plans were introduced relative to traditional um, pensions. And there has been a, a lag in uh, individual engagement. I think the, the process has taken considerably longer than what we had all, I think, anticipated. Um, to Pat's comment, which I think is an intriguing one, 9% uh, to, to fill in some numbers of individuals um, were able to define uh, explicitly the terms copay, premium, deductible, out of pocket maximum. And I find it um, an interesting coincidence that 9% of the US adult workforce is in healthcare. But the point is that I think we have a naive expectation that because we can provide this information, because we can provide uh, what is effectively a more program focused or an offering focused um, uh, effort toward uh, consumerism that somehow people will engage. And I think that we have not taken into account individual priorities, uh, perhaps relating to issues other than health um, you mentioned uh, linguistically and, and culturally appropriate terminology. So we have, a, I think, a, a bit of a ways to go. Well, and, and you know, I think it was well-intentioned, right? I think there was a, an orientation that we didn't necessarily want insurance companies to make all the decisions for our people. We wanted them to make value-based choices based on their own. But it turns out there's a thousand moving parts. And, and even people in the healthcare industry don't, if they can't understand what a deductible and a copay is, how can they understand all the nuance of the care that's being delivered and how do they potentially even engage with a provider who of course has much, much more knowledge in, in the situation than they do. And so that's, that's some of the issues.